Columbia, Houston, we see your tire pressure messages and we did not copy your last. Roger. Uh, this is Nacogdoches. It's the oldest town in Texas. It's home of Stephen F. Austin State University. It's where Sam Houston got married. It's where Davy Crockett stayed overnight at the Old Stone Fort. He had one of his last meals there, right before he left for the Alamo. I graduated from high school and college in the same building. I was not born in Nacogdoches, but came there because of my mama. She got a job as a professor in the English department and eventually became the chairman. Because of the university, country folk got an education. I know more than one Bubba with a college degree. One of those Bubbas was Joseph W. Kennedy. He co-discovered plutonium. On February 1st, 2003, at 8.01 a.m., the earth began to shake. By 8.07 a.m., and for the next 13 days, just like the Alamo, my hometown organized, managed, and led over 133 government agencies to recover the Space Shuttle Columbia and her crew. Location of your emergency. I can barely hear you. My name is Hubbard Hill. Okay, what's the emergency? It appears that we have had an explosion in this area. An explosion? That's what it sounds like. Okay, you don't know where it's coming from? No, ma'am. It, it is rocking the area. You know, I just asked what that noise was myself. We are on West Hill or is something blowing up? I don't know. Hold on one second. Hello? Hey. hey. Y'all getting calls about the flying yeah. object? About a flying object? Yeah, blowing up. Yeah. We're getting calls about something blowing up. Okay, we're just We've had one and we're thinking it's possibly a meteor. We've also heard it's a plane. Okay. All right. Do you have any particular area? Hold on. What's the area, Jack? Three forty three. On three forty three. Okay. Hold on one second. Hello. Uh, Crystal. Yes. This is Carrie. What is this? Uh, I, I don't know. Hold on, Carrie. Can I get a place to park with this Crystal? What's going on? Hold on one second. Be advised. Airport said it was two jets that flew over and broke the sound barrier. Nine one one. What's the exact address of your emergency? I live in Eastwood Terrace. I'm standing outside trying to see what exploded. Yes, ma'am. They think that two jets broke the sound barrier. I'm sitting the same. While I'm standing out here, something fell out of the sky. When? Looks like a little piece of metal. Do you see it now? Do you have it? Yes, yeah, ma'am. And y'all, it fell out of the sky. It's just a little bit of piece of metal. Look like a little piece of metal. When did it fall out of the sky? Yeah, it's, it's a pine tree here. When did it fall out? Oh, just then, just now. Okay, you're telling me a piece of metal fell out of the I'm sky. Gonna, I'm going to go here and pick it up. Okay, hold on just a minute. Don't oh, do that. Hold on a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. She said, don't pick it up. No, I just stepped back. And when I stepped back, you said, oh, no. We might need to get in the house. Okay. Are you Mary Fowler? Uh-huh. Okay, Mary. I'm getting off the road there. Okay. Get them go by a commercial bank in North Fredonia. Someone said there's a piece of metal that's falling there. That's where I'm right here, Okay, it's 364. Yeah. Can you see what I was talking about? Yeah, that's definitely something there. Shelby County's reporting something also. Shelby County's reporting something. That seems like the wrong direction. I think that's what the county said. I was listening to them. 235, 264. Ma'am, I'm not sure, but I think I just found part of an airplane right here at the, the city limits on 7th. Hey there a second. grandkids about this day when you saw pieces of the space shuttle. This is Peggy Hasso and she works at Commercial Bank. Her husband Tony is the local constable. I'm unable to get Mr. Tony Hasso, but we'll get him later. We'll have a live report from Sherino. Okay, tell us what you saw. It was about 8.09 in the morning. Tony was leaving to go to work. He had gone out to his car and I was in the kitchen when I heard the kitchen rattle. And I thought, what is happening? 
and I look outside and I see a trail of smoke that is not straight but real jaggedy that's going over the house. So he went on to work and a few minutes later he called me and he said that there was a piece of the debris from the space shuttle that had fallen behind Commercial Bank and it was about 15 after 8 at that time. Just a minute. So me and Katie, there's my reporter right there, then went and turned on, we turned off Roly Poly Oli and we turned on CNN News and we saw that the space shuttle, they had not heard from the space shuttle. That morning, Peggy grabbed her video camera and hopped in the truck with Tony. Adam said it's in the middle of y'all's parking lot. Like, I'm going to go She said there's a big chunk out near the airport. Steve Johnson witnessed the shuttle coming down. He estimated the altitude, took me up in his plane, and we flew the same path. Here you see several rooftops. Just, just, uh -huh. okay. That is where a hydrazine uh, containment cell was found. Exactly uh, like the one that I found right off the end of the runway. A family taking their first flying lesson took this video. As the day went on, Tony and Peggy went all over the county documenting pieces of the shuttle. Come on, this side. I just found a big six to eight foot arm, some kind of arm over here on the little springs. Lots of folks like Doreen were up early on Saturday morning. I parked my car about right here and I got out and I always look up to the sky and I looked up and seen a real bright light in the west and I started to go inside and I thought no that's unusual that's not the sun and that's not a, a star so it's something else I stood there and watched it and I thought well that's got to be a meteor so I ran in to get my husband I said come and look at this thing and he, he wasn't too interested he was just getting up but I grabbed him by the shoulder and yanked him outside to have him come and look at it too even though this was the big thicket in Piney Woods, the shuttle pieces were pretty easy to spot. This was the busiest dispatch system on Earth that day. Well, we began the day, it was Saturday morning. It's, it's my Friday, so of course, usually on those days, it's, it's pretty slow and, and, and calm. Um, I'm a training officer. I had a recruit at that point in time, um, and she was mainly working over here on Fireside, where I'm at right now. And then we had a police dispatcher as my partner who was um, working the police radio. And then all of a sudden, all types of phones started ringing 911, um, our administrative lines. It, it began where our 911 lines, they were rolling over to our admin lines. And we didn't even have lines available to be able to transfer calls, wanting to know what, what had happened. Um, we had reports of two jets crashing together to, to the space shuttle exploding. Jamie and Marilyn saw the shuttle from Timpson, Texas, outside of Nacogdoches. Jamie was outside first. She and my husband and her husband had seen the lights in the sky. It started like right over there and came across the sky this way. I guess it was about 8 o'clock that morning, mm -hmm. 7.30, 8 o'clock, and it just looked like big, huge rockets going now, across the sky. It was so big that we knew it couldn't be a regular airplane that was up there but whatever it was obviously had broken apart because there was one big section and then it was like fireworks coming off of it toward the front like this and then it was going all across the sky and then disappeared over I guess toward Hemp Hill in that direction San Augustine Hemp Hill area. A very large piece of the shuttle fell in the bank's parking lot and became the center of worldwide media attention. The employees that were in the bank at that time described uh, the sound as, uh, uh, as what they thought was like an earthquake, said that it, it shook the building. At the time that it, it, uh, it fell, the air blast from the pieces, if you will, were sufficient to pop the back doors open. Now, the doors were not locked. Uh, shortly thereafter, there was an, uh, a customer that came into the, uh, in the post office area and told them that there was a piece of an aircraft that had fallen in the bank's parking lot. Ruth Ann first saw the shuttle coming down on her way to work. When I came out into the parking lot, I had noticed that 
the police had already started roping off the lot and there was a piece of the shuttle, which at that time I didn't know what it was, but there was a piece lying in the parking lot. I came on into work that morning and noticed that the that the sky was very, very clear and it was a beautiful bright morning and as I turned down Park Street, I looked up and I saw what was appeared to be a very, very bright light. What I almost, it wasn't a ball of fire, but it was like a big ball. It was changing in size. It was expanding and decreasing. And then I noticed there was like little trails, which I called sparklers. I parked actually right here by the flagpole. And as I turned off my vehicle, I felt like something was different. It wasn't a sound, but yet it was like not a deep basing, but you could sense that something was different in the surrounding. So I stopped and hesitated a moment. And then it was after that, I got out of the vehicle and walked into the bank and then into the stairwell. And then that's when it all started to come about. After coming back to the parking lot, knowing the police were out here, the policeman looked at me and said, go upstairs, turn on the TV, and see if the shuttle has landed. And once he had said that, then I knew exactly what I had seen was that the shuttle was breaking up. And like I said, it was just constant phone calls from media, from citizens. I mean, and just trying to get all emergency management together and notified and, and get people called in to come help us. I've known Mike and Greg since high school when I was a law enforcement explorer scout. In, in, uh, initially, our, our emergency operations plan, uh, what we call the EOC, is, is based out of uh, the police department. And that's where you get you know, key people in the city together. And that, that was activated, uh, you know, city management, uh, city fire, public works, everything that could be needed in an emergency. The people are called out and they start showing up. Uh, of course, we're getting we're calling in an extra dispatch people because we're just getting uh, overrun with the calls of de you know debris around town. The first notice we gave the public was to don't touch it, leave it alone, stay away from it. Of course, some people didn't hear that, and uh, they began to bring some items in here to the station. I saw some small items and one fairly significant one that was brought in. I think it was actually a, a rocket jet uh, from one of the smaller engines. Uh, on the shuttle. The primary shuttle path corridor encompassed over 240 miles of territory, including all of Nacogdoches County. For about six months prior to the Columbia shuttle disaster, our county had, had spent time and resources uh, on a citizen hazardous mitigation committee, of which I was a part of, along with about 20 other people. We were scrambling. But we had a plan to start out with, and, and we had an organizational structure to begin with. So it really allowed us to effectively begin a proactive approach in the field, literally from the onset, as opposed to spending those first few precious hours just trying to get organized. In Texas, the county judge is the emergency management director, and in an emergency, the EMD is the final authority the one that's really in charge of running the incident. A lot of places may have an emergency management coordinator that works closely with the director, which we do have here. It's the judge that has a tremendous amount of authority, can allocate resources, can commandeer resources, can obligate the county's money to respond to an emergency. We're required to develop a hazard mitigation plan, which basically means you appoint a body of local citizens who go through a process of identifying potential hazards and then identifying ways that you can address those before they actually become emergencies or become full-blown situations. So we had appointed this local committee and Dr. James Kroll at the university with the Forest Research Institute agreed to chair that. So we had worked so closely together for over two months because we met every week that we got to know each other extremely well Within 57 minutes, we had our command up and running. Everybody, most of the people were on board even before then. 